There is a lot to go over in Bubbleworks. Uh, we'll try to keep it at the high level and just demonstrate uh, what it can do and uh, allow you guys to get your hands on it through an evaluation or uh, if you already have some of our products tested out on Plant3D yourself. So to begin with, quickly adding BOM mark numbers and tables. Uh, this allows you to just basically set up a very simple uh, bill of material table with equipment items, steel items, piping items, uh, things of that sort. And it's your typical BOM table where it starts at one and continues until it runs out of items. Uh, the second area that Bubbleworks excels in is creating master material lists. And this is similar to a, a standard BOM with the exception that you get to control your mark numbers. So if you want that same two inch piece of pipe that's a, a two inch standard wall pipe to be mark number 55 through the entire project, assigning a master material list mark number for that component ensures that every time you run a bill of material throughout the project, that same mark number shows up on every drawing that you work with. And that will apply for steel and piping components both. And finally, we'll get into just annotating tagged items in your models. Whether it's a, a nozzle tag, equipment tag, a, a steel column ID, or any piping tagged component like valve tags, pipe supports, uh, tie points, uh, things of that nature. So we'll go ahead and just jump right into the software and take a look at what we can accomplish here. So inside of Bubbleworks, we've got three pallets, and we're just going to walk through these uh, different pallets here of operation and explain a little bit about each one. We'll start with the BOM pallet, and we're going to be assigning mark numbers to all of the steel components inside of this viewport. So I chose the viewport parts option, which says, all right, I'm going to go through here, follow any settings we may have set up down here in our settings icon. And once we have those selected, we will be able to insert all the mark numbers and the tables starting with one and continue down the line. All of our marks are standard AutoCAD M leaders, meaning you get the ability to utilize AutoCAD's functionality with just typical mark numbers as you go through here on the M leader side of things. So stretching, aligning, combining, things of that nature are all incorporated with Bubbleworks here. So we'll walk through this one more time, kind of align a couple of these guys. Uh, the other options over here, are the ability to select parts individually or add additional parts to a viewport um, or this final viewport add parts. Viewport add parts, basically, meaning uh, if something changes in the design and you need to include more items or the scope of work grows and you need to kind of expand your viewport out, um, this will go through the process and find any missing parts or pieces so that if you're not the designer and you have all that information siloed away in your head, uh, somebody else can jump in really quickly and add additional parts and pieces to this drawing and make sure everything is complete. Uh, you'll notice that it did go through and rebubble everything. So even though you're adding more information to this, you don't have to start the entire process over and cleaning up any bubbles that you had already cleaned. Anything that was already done will stay in place and then we'll simply add the new items to the bill of material list. And then you can continue cleaning these guys up with, again, just standard functionality that comes with AutoCAD using these M leaders. So it's kind of the, the steel side of things. We're going to jump over to the piping side using the same exact functionality. We're just going to say, let's go through, select a viewport, and it's going to allow us to then annotate all these components and then create our table over to the side here. So we'll let that finish up. Uh, so far, everything I've been doing also as it's working is through an XREF. So you don't have to be in the current model to be doing any of this stuff. Uh, you can be in either the model or an XREF to get all this information across. And now that we have our table in there, again, we can just go through and start cleaning all these items up. So let's kind of separate these out and get them in place here. One of the nice things about this as well being standard M leaders, uh, we can combine these M leaders to clean it up a little bit more. And if you select one of these items, uh, you don't have to come over here and decipher the table and find number five. If you just pick the item, it'll show up here in the list. So I know that five is my gasket, six is my bolt. I can now combine these two into one leader and clean it up even further. If you pick them in the order, this is just a little tip of AutoCAD here, the order you pick them in will decide 
the order they show up. If you just do a window like I have on the bottom section, they may come out in a different order than the previously manually selected each one. So. All right, now we can continue cleaning these up and walking through the process. Um, but I think you guys get the idea. One other feature with this is we do control it based off of the visible mark numbers that are available in this tab. So if we decide to come through and erase some of these because they're gonna show up on another viewport or we're gonna account for them some other way, maybe we're just saying this is a typical section and we don't need to worry about them. Uh, we can just simply come over here and say, let's sync this bill of material. And again, it's gonna go through, find out what parts are available and what is not available reassign the mark numbers and readjust your bill of material table for you to include or exclude those items that are in there. So complete control over what it looks like and how items are gonna be added in there. Let's go ahead and close out some drawings here. And kind of move on to the next section. We're gonna be talking about the master material list. This is going to be the same process as before, with the exception that now we get to control our mark numbers. So as these guys are opening up here, uh, the difference, again, is just the mark number that we're utilizing. And these mark numbers are created through an Excel spreadsheet. So we can open up a model or an overall XREF that has everything else combined together and say, let's create this master material list. Uh, as the project grows and you add more items, you can always say update master materialist as well. But we're taking this description and length over here, kind of finding a match based on the components, and then assigning this mark number. If you don't like the mark numbers that we automatically assign starting with one, you can always open up this Excel spreadsheet and update all those mark numbers to match exactly what you need. You could reorder them, you could do some sorting. Uh, I'm just using the out of the box project here so you can see things are all over the place, uh, but you could easily clean this up to meet your needs, your client needs, or whoever that may be that your final deliverable is for. Same thing applies to piping. We're gonna find matches based off of size and long description as we go through this process here. So when we're working with an MML, you choose either piping or steel just to ensure that we're gonna grab the right components for you. Uh, as before, We've got our style options up here on the BOM side, same with the MML. You can pick and choose what style of enclosure you want to have. So as you look through the list, we've got quite a few out of the box here. If it's something that you want to modify or customize, all these blocks are customizable for your company needs and you can even add to them. So if there's more enclosures you would like to see, feel free to open up the block and modify that to fit your needs. So this is the same exact model that, or viewport that we went through before with the same model and everything. But this time you'll notice we do have completely different mark numbers. So instead of being one and sixes, we've got 89s out here for all the items. And so again, easily add all these items in there. Clean it up a little bit, do as you need to. And if you're still curious on what some of these items are, which one's the base plate, which one's the column, uh, again, just simply select the item and it'll show up for you over here in the, the panel. Now to get your bill of material to show up, um, we've got one step here. And the reason we separated this part out is some of our clients like the ability to have multiple viewports on a drawing with multiple tables. And so basically each viewport gets its own table so that they could really detail out some different areas. And so in this process, we give you the option to choose all bubbles, so everything that we find inside this layout, or you can pick and choose which bubbles you would like to see. So I'll just go ahead and say all, throw it up here in the corner. Uh, you can see that this long description is also a little bit long. So since this is just a standard AutoCAD table, they're very easy to manipulate, but if you want to set it up even further, we rely on your standard table style. Also, we give you the ability to come into our bubble work settings, going through the BOM tab, tag, or MML, which corresponds to each of these tabs over here. And you can pick and choose which items to include or exclude on each of these settings here, what layers they come in on, as well as when we get down here, what columns show up, as well as the width of each column and justification. So, all of these settings can be saved and exported out to a central location so that everybody can share this and utilize the same information across the board on each project for each client, save them out differently, 
uh, however you see fit for your needs and we'll be able to respect those settings for you across the board. And again, same thing on the piping side, we can go through very easily and select our viewport, annotate all the items and then clean this up a little bit. And again, with the ability to pick and choose which bubbles get assigned to which table, allows you to then be able to have multiple details on a drawing with separate bill of materials for each one of these guys. And again, same process, um, just kind of walk through here, clean them up a little bit. Looks like I grabbed a little bit too much on that side, but that's all right. You guys kind of get the idea here. And again, each of these items are just standard M liters. So you can see here our text is a little bit too large. You could easily modify the text size, the font, any of that by choosing your styles over here. So let's go ahead and uh, close out of these two and jump into our final section here called the tagging. And this part right here is really helpful for multiple disciplines, whether it's instrumentation, trying to find all their instrument tags throughout an entire project, the structural group trying to label all their column IDs, uh, pipers trying to find all their valve tags, their pipe support tags, any of that stuff that you need to go through this process here. And so we'll, uh, we'll jump in first on the, the, um, the equipment over here. So we've got a couple pieces of equipment. We're gonna start with this T100 and just label out all of the nozzles. And so according to my settings down here, I've already got that set up ready for this. I'm gonna go ahead and choose one of our different styles that we have out here. And just a, a quick explanation, the first column is just our identifier, the second is the amount of attributes that are gonna show up, and then the third is what's the shape and what information. So if you want northern and eastings, make sure you choose one of these. Uh, if you just want a standard single attribute bubble for these guys, we'll go ahead and go that route as well. So get these guys dropped in here for us. We'll uh, choose the automatic role. And so far, all of these have been automatic, meaning you pick the viewport, we find the parts, and we find the location of the bubble. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more control here in the next section, but again, let's just quickly clean these up so we can see what's going on. And then once that's in place, of course, being standard M leaders, you can stretch these around and do what you need to with them. So now that we have these all labeled, uh, you can go back and run a bill of material, create your table for it, and have a, a very quick nozzle schedule for a piece of equipment. Let's jump out of this file, go into the next one. Uh, in this case, I am gonna jump into the semi-auto. So the great thing about semi-auto, it allows us to have the software automatically find everything that has a tag value to it that's in the viewport. But we get to pick and choose what the style of our bubble is and where that bubble goes. And so with this one, I know I'm inserting a gate valve. Uh, I, down here I see I have one dash, meaning I could have put these on one attribute and it's gonna be a single line or we'll automatically split any dash or dollar sign to multiple attributes. So if I want all of my valves to look like this, then I could go through and just pick and choose each one, each location. And drop those guys in there. That's my last valve. Now I'm moving on to pipe supports. I do want my pipe supports to be slightly different. So let's do a two attribute rectangle for this guy and walk through that process. So if you're doing hundreds of items like I'm about to on the next one, you might wanna do automatic and just let it throw everything on the screen so you know what's going on. But if you're doing some smaller detailing, it's really nice to be able to use semi-auto, pick and choose which uh, style of bubble enclosure you wanna use and their locations, it goes pretty quickly. Now with all of our products here in Bubbleworks or all of our tags, this is linked directly to the model. And so if we open this model up, and fix the fact that that valve right there didn't have a tag number, we can easily go through and sync all this once our bubbles are placed. So beautiful thing about webinars, it's already logged in perfectly for you. Uh, so I didn't have to go find this valve beforehand. I made sure I saved to the right location. And we'll come down here, find our number for this valve right here. And we'll just put in 303, get out of there. This is the live model. And so I do need to make sure I save this and upload or reload my XREF on this side. So let's go ahead and reload that guy. Once it finishes reloading, then we're gonna have the ability to sync all of our tags. 
So now it's going to go through the model, compare any changes that may have had to any of these tags, and then give them that beautiful ECE orange right there. So we're going to let you know what changed, how it changed, and what the new information is and then highlight the color so that you can follow any management of change processes you may have, whether it's just a simple rev cloud, or if it hasn't gone out to the client yet, then we just simply let's say, all right, let's go back to our standard layer colors and move on. We don't need to do anything else with this. All right, so we finished that section of it. Let's go ahead and close this guy down and just move right into the next one here. So this one does take a little bit of effort to, uh, to get done. So I'm just going to leave it on this current style. And this one's really just to represent how we can easily go through and find all of our different information. In this case, it's going to be pipe supports. So I've kind of frozen all the other layers. I don't want it to grab. And once those layers are frozen or locked, uh, we're going to ignore that data. Again, based off of our settings down here. And we're going to be able to find every single pipe support that's in this viewport. Uh, it does look like we've got a lot of work to clean up on this project. So I can easily just come through here again, organize this stuff in a way that looks nice. Once I have it in place, then cleaned up, all I have to do is go back to the model, update all of these tags, and hit the sync option. So once it's cleaned up, you don't have to continually go back and rebubble everything. It's going to remember the location, it's going to be synced to that particular item. And anytime this tag value changes, we're gonna know that it's been updated and we're gonna put that new value in here for you. Let's go ahead and just kind of close down some of this stuff, make sure the computer's still staying happy here. And make sure I covered everything as we kind of jump into the questions here. So we've talked about the BOM tag and mark number as a recap. So being able to have either just standard mark numbers through the process or being able to control that mark number through the entire project with a master material list is super beneficial. And then finally being able to just tag any item, whether it's the, the column ID or any equipment nozzles or just specialty items, instrumentation, anything like that. So I think with that, we'll jump over to any questions that may have popped up, Brian. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Ben. Uh, not too many questions come through so far. So if you got any, just please go ahead and, uh, Add them in there. Um, I could probably handle the first one here, Matt, uh, relative to uh, what if we already own um, bubble works, will it work with Plan 3D as well? So yes, the answer is yes. So um, we do not make our plugin specific to CADWorks or Plan 3D. So if you already own bubble works, when the new release or the new build comes out, which we hope uh, will be here any uh, any day now, you will be able to utilize bubble works on both CADWorks and Plan 3D. So. All right, Matt, that might be all the questions today. So it looks like you answered everything there. So I appreciate uh, appreciate your time. Anything else from you, Matt, today for the uh, for the webinar? Uh, no, just uh, thank you guys for your time. If you are interested in something that works very quick and easy, I'd like to get a trial version. As Brian said, once this is released, we'll uh, make the announcement, and you guys can take your time and play around with it a little bit. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out. All right, y'all. Have a good rest of your week. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thanks, Brian.